our city council work session or work, excuse me, committee means order. And the first committee will be Mr. Cook, Development Services. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> we have two items to discuss today. The first would be <clears throat> a uh, discussion of the B2 zoning district permitted and conditional uses. And I'll ask Jason, if you would, to introduce that. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, Council, uh, if you'll recall at the last meeting, we had a discussion about rezoning a property on Wolf Nursery Road uh, from B2 to industrial uh, because B2 <clears throat> did not allow a permitted use for what their intended use was. Uh, the mayor suggested perhaps that at the next committee meeting tonight uh, that we discuss B2 and whether or not it's the desire of the committee or the council to include either that particular use or any other business uses either in the permitted by right uses of B2 or a conditional use in B2. And so with that, I'll turn it over to you guys for this discussion and questions. Thank you. <clears throat> for the committee, uh, and uh, do we have any comments, discussion? Brandon? So much already in B2. Brandon? Uh, no, the, the issue was because if we had zoned it industrial, right, it, it, that's, it has to stay industrial. It, it couldn't be rezoned again from industrial back to any other. That's correct. Industry. In that particular case, the intent is to be a paint and body shop, yes. which is not allowed as any kind of use in B2. It's only listed under industrial, so the, the land would have had to been rezoned to industrial, which, yes, yes once you change it, it's, it's it's there. Okay, that's, that's that was the only <clears throat> question I had on that. Is, okay, Maddie. It's not like a garage. Like a garage is considered industrial, like where they work on cars. No, that is on the. That's on. No, here. it's on B two. Right. Yeah. Uh, the paint and body has its own paint definition mm -hmm. in the zoning ordinance. Oh, there it is. Sorry, I was looking for garage, not auto. Okay. My issue with the thing that last week or two weeks ago was the location. And that's a high volume street. And I thought we could have a better use for that building, for that particular building. I don't have an issue adding paint and body to B2, uh, but that was my issue with last week. I just wanted to, I think there was a better use for that building than a paint and body shop right across the street from the camp or the stadium on that high volume road. Okay. To be, to be clear, if you do add it as a yeah. permitted yeah, use, this. Yeah. yeah. And they do own the property. They do own it. And I would love to see something go in there because it's been empty for, what, three or four years? Yeah. We tried to buy it. Yeah, yeah we did. I actually came very close to buying it. Uh, <clears throat> what are some of the other uses right now that goes into that, could be allowed in that section? Uh, in Mayor, it's included in the packet. There's 92, I it's think. 94. 94. Everything except for body shop. Yeah, yeah. everything but a body shop. Paint and body shop, yeah. I mean, everything from tobacco shops, tattoo parlors, tattoo parlors. Uh, research lab, that's, that's in there. Psychic, oh, there we go. We could put psychiatric patient facility there. Yeah. We could put a cemetery. Mayor, what was your funeral home? A funeral home, amusement park, convalescent center. In other words, the question is, what I guess what you're asking, Gerald, is could it be considered a conditional use, yeah. meaning up given the allow the uh, city staff to approve it as a conditional use? Is that what you're asking? Or if a conditional use, if it comes back to the planning and zoning and then back to the council? Yes. For any specific that, use, is that's, that not correct? That's correct. Anything under conditional use is not a staff level approval. It's still P and Z and council. Uh, it just means it can be used in that zoning district, but it requires <coughs> permission of PNZ and council. So it would prevent all the other industrial is issues. So in other words, it could come back as industrial, come back as B2 with that conditional use in there. Yes. It, it, what that means is anywhere in B2, if somebody wanted to do that, each individual case would have to come before y'all for approval. Would it, 
if 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 we want to add this in, does it still go back to planning and zoning too? Yes, because this is the zoning ordinance, the approval process for a change. We'll have to go to the planning and zoning and then back to the council again for a final determination. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, that, <clears throat> all right. Any other thoughts from the rest of the council? I had one, Gerald, and I don't know the answer to this. I bet Jason does a conditional use for a specific property applies to that property with that owner. If the ownership changes, does the conditional use still stay like zoning with the property? It's a good question. I believe it's tied to the use. And so as long as, so, long as it stays that yeah, particular if thing. You, if you put the paint body in and then sell it to me and I keep the paint body in, then the conditional use would still be good. Uh, but even you, if you still own it, but you change the use of it, then that permission goes away. As long as I maintain that use, right? it, it is transferable. So it's, it's tied to the use, not the ownership paper. That's it. That's, it's being permitted to be used for a specific manner. Yeah, go ahead. That's that's it's such a high level street. You have you have the junior high there, you have Texas Bank down the road there. You've got a brand new stadium going across the road from it. And I was happened to be in Dallas, in that area, Grapevine. I don't know. I was up in Dallas, Fort Worth last week, and I went by one of those garages like that. And I'm saying it's not the same one that has the fence all around it and everything, but it sure did not look like the picture that we saw last last week, two weeks ago. Cars were parked out, out in front of the fence. They were parked on the road. I just think we need to be careful on <clears throat> what it does to the aesthetic looks of the new stadium that's getting ready to go up in the community. People are gonna be coming to visit and, and you got the junior high over there on traffic after school. I just think we need to be careful on of what we put in that area. I'm sorry, that's how I feel. I you totally have, agree. Sorry, Mayor. I just had a couple questions. Looking back at permitted uses, he can have a repair shop there, a mechanic garage, right now. Yeah. So he can put all those cars around it on the outside mm -hmm. with whatever the parking requirements are. He could do that. He just can't paint. He can, just, he can't re he can repair a car, but he can't paint it. Right. Right. And in addition to that, he can actually turn it into a parking lot, commercial parking lot. Mm -hmm. He could bulldoze that building and put a parking lot there and start charging people who want to play it, go to the football field and stuff. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. I, I think so too, idea. I make that's a lot of money. I <laughs> so I guess my question is, what is the and I understand on what you said about the building uh, but that's true with anything that we put in there any kind of commercial use mm -hmm. and my question is is it going to be any it actually auto mechanic garage I think will look worse than if it's a uh, paint body shop considering the rendering he gave us now can you force him to do that rendering you can't can you he can come in and change whatever he wants to. I mean, he's going to put a fence up, et cetera. But you can look at his, his locations around Texas, or really it's across the nation, I think, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. And look at his locations and see what his buildings look like and get an idea of what he, he'll produce. But if he sells that to somebody else, you're right, he can park what he wants to. Anymore. But he can do that now with a car, with a repair. He can put a mechanic's garage in there. And the only difference between the two is he's inside painting cars. He's not going to paint them outside because of the weather. So that's my only question. It just... It, it's one of those, I think, a flaw in the system. And I think what Jason is suggesting or what Gerald's suggesting is that it'd be a, maybe a conditional use, meaning we can do it under what? Is, is bringing into B2 an industrial, what we can now call an industrial use into a B2. Is that right? Actually, I'm not recommending that. Okay, I, just, I, <clears throat> I But I think we need to explore that. What are all the options that we've got on this particular thing and, and bring it in as a B2 under conditional use is certainly one of those options if we want to proceed with this I think uh, are there any other restrictions that can be placed upon this <coughs> Steve so <coughs> sorry <laughs> so Monica was asking me a question I think and it was a good point on the paint and body, there is a limitation on how long a vehicle can be on the property that's, I guess, disabled, and I believe that's a 30-day window. There's nothing that would be that we would have to be able to go and say, hey, you can't have a car 
um, parked in the front of the building unless we use the the junk motor vehicle statute which would be a, a 30 day window anyways and then they would be past their 30 their 30 days <coughs> where it can set on the property <coughs> in a disabled state have you ever known the city to enforce that we've any place dealt else? with another paint and body shop in town and had them clean up quite a bit uh, but it was a short-lived um, correction and so we probably need to visit with those folks again here in the near, near future um, I think the question was can you put a condition on the conditional use and I believe the answer to that is yes you might recall we had a uh, parking lot that we were considering approving as a conditional use and one of the conditions that was placed on that agreement was that it had to be tied to a, a long-term contract between the two entities and that it had to be for a minimum of five years uh, kind of going on memory here but we did have a condition on the conditional use and then that never that never transpired and so that conditional use basically um, expired at the end of 180 days so I think we could do the same thing we could put a condition on it whatever that condition may be uh, perhaps no vehicles parked in the front uh, everything has to be stored behind the, the screening I think you can do that, uh, but there's no way to just grant the, the permitted use and then tell them that they can't have vehicles out there unless we get a little creative on other statutes that we can lean on. Okay. Does the uh, conditional use, is that initiated by us sending back to the P and Z or the property owner can already, they can request a conditional use? Whatever. No, you can't now because it's not it's not allowable under B2 at all, but if you installed it as a condition so, of use, then there's an application process. So we need to just say that we need to put, we have to put paint and body in, in the ordinance or? Yes. In order for it to be allowable at all in any fashion, if you would need to recommend that, that we take it through the process and in whatever fashion you want, permitted use or conditional use and then Steve would make a proposed alteration to the ordinance send it to PNZ for their consideration and then up to full council to adopt okay. or not adopt I got you. okay I'm not saying that we need to that we need to do this I don't know it's just that I'm just looking at some of the usages we have there and they're so similar it is it, it I just question whether or not I mean because an auto body can you in an auto body can they park all the cars around the front can I take an old beat up car and put it around parking in the very front yard? Yes, sir. Well, we're not talking you, about an auto body shop. Well, but, it, but yeah, auto but body shop, I mean, that. we're not talking about a painting deal. We're talking about, I mean, we're talking about a painting auto body shop. We're not talking about it, just an automotive repair garage here either. But an automotive it's repair garage. I know we can do that. It's collision, isn't it? It's yeah. collision. It's collision. Yeah. I understand. But you, right now, you could have an auto body, I mean, have an auto part repair store there. You could. And he could bring in all his cars, let them sit there for two years if he had to repair them. And so some of the concerns I've heard, and I'm not saying we need to do it. It's down the street from my house. I agree with all the different aesthetic issues y'all are talking about. I really do. It just doesn't make it. It just seems like one of those issues. You know, does this make sense? You know, I've had citizens call and say, you know, they don't want it there. And, that, and I'm okay with doing that too. It just didn't make sense to me at the time. We didn't have good answers for the gentleman who presented. I said, well, at least we ought to consider it. So maybe, anyway, I'm sure it's not for me. I mean, and, you know, but, and the whole aspect thing, I mean, granted, yeah, it's not what ideally what we want there, but I mean, they could always sell it and put a, you know, a, a, a bell bond service and vape emporium <laughs> or something, you know? I mean, it, it's, it is what it is, you know? I mean, it's, unfortunately, there's a flaw in this zoning uh, where we're at, where they can put just about anything they want, except for a paint paint body shop. I just have a really hard time when somebody invests that much money in a piece of property. That, like we said, I mean, we almost purchased it, our, purchased it ourselves. It sat empty for this long. They've put a lot of, they've spent a lot of money to purchase it, and I, I agree. That's not, I mean. If, I had my way, I would say, no, let's buy this other property. But that's not what happened. This is what happened. And it's right next door 
to an automotive repair place as well. Tar, just tar, tar shop. Right. Tar tar shop. Tar. Well, but still, but there's still cars sitting outside. There's still, and that's, I mean, nothing against discount tires. <coughs> but I, I just, when he purchased well, the property, though, he already knew how it was zoned. So that did. wasn't a surprise. And that's where I'm kind of hung up a little bit as well. As he, he knew he was going to jump through hoops to get this approved anyway. I wouldn't think that anyone would spend the kind of money that they spent to purchase this particular piece of property without checking to see if it was zoned properly for the type of activity that they wanted to put in it. And if they did, then they're not as good a business people as I would think they would be. And so, you know, so they knew. They knew that they would have to come to the city and ask for uh, us to change something, and ask for the zoning change, which didn't make a lot of sense to go to industrial. Now, to bring it back in as a B2 conditional use permit might have more sense if we can put additional restrictions on how the use is going to be. And you're saying now, that may that. be the, that I may very yes, well be our, our uh, that might be the direction we need to go. I don't know. I mean, we can't. If, he made, if they made the mistake of, of, of buying the property without checking it, it's not on us, it's on them. I mean, they're the ones that own it. But I don't know that you're allowed to put additional requirements. In our definitions, a conditional use is a use which shall be permitted in a particular district only upon fulfillment of the conditions set forth for that use in the use regulations for the appropriate district. Okay. So he would be bound, if you did it, he would be bound by, by what that. it says in industrial, but I don't think you can go beyond that. He'd be bound by whatever it says. Right. In and then two zone, if we, if, I mean. Yes, yeah, so his setbacks and all that kind of stuff would match what the regular zoning for it is. Okay. And then that no more than 30 days, that's actually in the definition of a paint and body shop, so it doesn't matter or what zoning classification you put it in, that's a requirement in the definition okay. of one. Okay. What's the, how does, uh, what is the committee would like, what, which direction you wanna go with this? So we're voting on whether we wanna add the conditional use for this piece of property or add to or, this. Or not. I don't, I don't know necessarily that I need a voting action from you guys tonight. Okay. Uh, if you, I mean, if, if you think you want to consider it, then, then you guys can say, yeah, I think it's something to consider. So staff. Are we, uh, are we looking at any kind of, as far as the decision making is, is concerned, is there any timeline on this? From well, if you, if you direct staff to run it through the, the change process, then it's Steve. It's going to take months. Well, Steve would have to get it on his next available window for P and Z, which that's not, you're probably July. past July already. Yeah. Or are you still we, in the window? I think we can make July. Okay. If we, if we know So he day. could put it on P and Z's in July and bring it back to council for a, a firm dis ordinance decision in August if you want to consider it. If you say we don't want to consider it, then we'll just move on. I assume, though, that we could also have Steve work with the chair on what those definitions look like and decide from there whether to have a, con uh, in a positive report going forward. It didn't have to be done in July or August. It can be done in October. It can be done. Right. Help me out on the would the Well, it's like the would, And then I'll <clears throat> bring it back if it would be okay with the committee, uh, Brandon <coughs> and Maddie and Leanne, then we'll go that direction and we'll sit down with Steve and we'll work out that detail and then bring it back to the committee. Okay, <clears throat> sounds good. Um, which detail are we wanting to work out? Well, but you could go to you could go to industrial even and change that definition, some of the setbacks and some things as well if you needed to. Okay. You could you could look at these items in B two. <coughs> you know. Okay. There is some concern there. Uh, and uh, does that work for you, Steve? Yes, sir. It, it does. I'm, I don't know that I'm still following you on what you're looking to consider. Well, it's either either we 
we uh, we work out some kind of a compromise here, or we turn it down. Right. The only compromise that I can think of is the, uh, 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 as we've already discussed here. But I, I'm sensing that there is some, uh, not everybody is in agreement. Though. Right. So we're buying with the time, I guess is what I'm doing. I just, if, you know, I'm, if you're thinking in your head, well, we could add screening requirements or something like that. I don't think you're going to get to pick an individual thing if you made a screening requirement. It would go for everything. Correct. Uh, it would have to go for everything that's uh -huh. in that particular uh, Because once you apply it to a, a, you would be applying it to a zoning classification. Correct. Uh, something like that. So. Oh, you mentioned definition. I mean, now. yeah. So that this gets expanded somewhat. Right. So, but. Sounds like you want to take some more time. And yeah, absolutely. Okay. How does the committee feel? Do you feel okay with this? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So okay. we're not saying no. We're just saying we're going to hold for a little bit, study this a little bit longer. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Thank you. The next uh, item, Mayor is the approval of uh, proposed revisions to the subdivision ordinance. And Steve, I think you're the author of uh, this particular staff report. Yes, sir. This is uh, the section related to the parkland dedication fees. And we had recently, well, it's been two or three years now, changed the parkland dedication fees for uh, different types of developments in the city. And within that ordinance, it actually listed what the, what the fees are. And when we changed the fee schedule, we created a conflict. And so this is simply a house cleaning uh, measure to make the ordinance correlate with the fee schedule. And so in your packet, <clears throat> the track changes didn't show up. So I, I printed that out and you have that in front of you. That's uh, just my shot at what we thought we might could do to just make the parkland dedication fee mm -hmm. coincide with the fee schedule that is adopted annually. Uh, if we take this approach, then as we change the fee schedules moving forward, there will no, no longer be a contradiction within the, the subdivision ordinance. But it still allows the person that is on in a subdivision put a park in the subdivision, neighborhood yeah. parks, in lieu of this. Yes. The only, only thing we're changing is making the removing the reference to an actual fee and just referring them back to the definition and saying that the fee to the is fees required the based on, on an annual basis yes sir. steve's yes. right it's strictly housekeeping we were in a conversation with a developer that said they wanted to pay so how much is that and he was looking at the fee schedule i was looking at the ordinance and went well that's two different amounts uh, turn to the most big point well, <laughs> we had that discussion, but the subdivision ordinance would take priority since that's the, the regulating the control on the parkland dedication. So this is the fix to that. Just refer this to the fee schedule, and then it cleans it up. One but point. The the, actually, yes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what had been changed was right. the, you guys, through the adoption of the fee schedule, had adopted a little bit higher fee yeah. on those. But the ordinance spelled out a precise number, so. And this is an ordinance revision, so it would not have to go to PNZ for a public hearing. Um, it's not a land use regulation, which would require that process. This would not, because it's Chapter 155, which is subdivision ordinance. So, recommendation to council is all we need. Okay. What's the wishes of the committee? Mr. Chairman, I move that we recommend the proposed revision to City Council as presented in the staff report. Do I have a second? We have a motion and a second that uh, we approve the uh, the uh, recommendations made by staff with regard to the subdivision <clears throat> payment in lieu of uh, on the parkland. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> uh, we will present this to the uh, city council then, put it on the agenda. We'll Thanks, sir. Council's a recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, I think we're done with this.
Mr. Basket. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Monica, would you like to come up and enlighten us to uh, this agenda <laughs> item? So in um, March of 2023, we contracted with ClearGov um, for our transparency page and uh, also our digital budget book. And so we have those out there now. Well, they've come up with a new module for the annual comprehensive financial report so that that information could be, be presented in a, a digital format. Also allows for a little bit easier collaboration when uh, developing the report itself with the auditors because we can all collaborate on the same information. So um, they're giving a 30% discount uh, to people who sign up before the end of the month. Uh, in this case, our, our setup would be January 2025. They prorate us for the first year, and then it would be the, the uh, annual fee for the next three years. So in total for the contract, it's gonna run just under 25,000 for the next four fiscal years, next year and then three more. Um, this is something that is counselable. Uh, you pay your, your fee up front at the beginning of the year, and you can counsel, I think it was with uh, either 30 or 60 days notice, I think, um, before the end of the term. So yeah, it's 60 days. So when you get down to the end of it, 60 days, if you decide you don't really like the software, you can you can cancel out and there's there's no uh, re, 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 uh, uh, there's no additional cost they, they don't tr they don't penalize you for that so uh, we've been really pleased with our transparency website that we have with them and also the digital budget book so we like your permission to to move forward and like I said we don't pay anything this year for this year's budget um, this would just been able for me to go ahead and put it in for the next year's budget and to go ahead and sign with them so to get our discount. I have a couple questions for you. Mm -hmm. So you said if you if we commit to it by the end of the month, then we get this 30% off. But if we send it for positive recommendation today, it won't be approved until July 2nd. So they've, they've agreed to go ahead and, and uh, add a section on their service contract uh, down at the bottom that uh, if we go ahead and sign before the end of the month, that it would still require approval from council on the whatever the July meeting, second or oh, third, sorry. whatever it is, um, and and that if you council full council decided not to let us do it, then no harm, no foul. Okay, and then my second question is: so this was an added feature, so we, we started you know se second quarter last year, I guess, with this into the first quarter, and now here we are, second quarter, you know mid second quarter of uh, this year are we gonna is this a reoccurring thing that we're gonna see like additions and uh, add-ons to it depends on what modules I mean because they have more modules than just what we purchased so I mean there's other modules we can purchase if we want we just we, we went with um, capital budgeting which we'll be trying to put into place this year um, we've got the transparency and then the digital budget book and then there's also some some other bells and whistles that come just come with it we don't pay any additional money for it where you can set up pages for each department where you can show like if we wanted to do a page for the airport and show the number of landings and and, and stuff we could um, so there's a lot of bells and whistles with this we're kind of you know still at a, a fairly infant stage but still learning that yeah yeah um so it's it depends on what they what their genius minds think of that we go oh, that's awesome we need that so uh, this is just something that um, and part of this is as most of you have looked at our audits they're just not real interesting and and <laughs> and and even with the budget book when we do it having it digital it allows people to look things in graphs and formats and they can dig into information they can exclude information and and so we believe that the the having the act for digital will also allow that and maybe give some of our citizens a little easier way to understand all that financial information okay, thank you. any other questions from the committee Gerald <clears throat> You just kind of refresh my memory here, but <clears throat> cost-wise, you 
we've done this for one year already, right? Similar? We started, so we're the second year into it. This is the second year into it. Well, we signed the contract in March 2023. Okay. So we just did our, our second year. We just did our How second much year. Is this a continuation of what we got, or are we talking about This something is something totally better? new. No, this is totally new. So we purchased modules for budgeting and for transparency, and we've been using those. And so we pay... I think it's 17000 a year for that. This is a totally separate module that's specifically for the annual comprehensive financial report. So we would have budgeting, transparency, and the ACFR. Okay. okay, and this particular one? Would run us about 6000 a year. About 6000 a year. Okay. So does the and you're looking at a four-year deal? Uh, yeah, because they prorate the first year and then there's three full years. So yes, four years. So with the setup, the prorated first year and the three years is just under twenty five thousand. Okay. okay. Thank you. And that's why we're bringing it to you. Typically, anything over twenty five has to come for y'all. But since it was so close, we're bringing it anyways. Okay. Rest the council. Anybody have any questions for Monica? What's the pleasure of the committee? I think that the, uh, we, we talk a lot about transparency. If this, and, and, and we, we want to make it as easy and as simple for uh, the taxpayers of this town to understand that. And if this will help out at $6,000 more per year, for a good program, as you say it is, you know, I trust you, Monica, I think you, you know, you're going to, you're not leading us astray here, and it seems like this would be the right way to go, so I would, I'd move that we uh, recommend to the council the, uh, this contract. Second. All right, we've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being the ways, Maddie. Um, uh, so that will be moved <laughs> forward to uh, committee on July 2nd with a uh, <laughs> sorry, with a positive recommendation. And that concludes the finance committee, Mr. Mayor. Ms. Smith. All righty. So we're going to move on to nominations. We have a few openings due to people on these committees either becoming council members or resigning or moving away. And so I have. I'm going to start first with um, Board of Adjustments. Mr. Parr has stepped down because he is now on council. And we have one applicant, which is Tina Virgin, who I believe we all have the applications if y'all have any questions. But I think this is a great fit for her to get involved and get moving forward in the city that she wants to be involved in. Like she wants to step up and be part of something. I'd make the recommendation that we <coughs> move Tina Virgin into the place three on Board of Adjustments. Second. Okay. Do you have any questions, Alan? Do you have anything? So we'll move to Tina Virgin to place three with a positive recommendation to Council, which we will have to interview her on the July 2nd meeting for that position. Madam Chair. Yeah. Can you take a vote for her? Oh, yeah. Sorry. All in favor say aye. 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 Sorry. The uh, next position is the Library Advisory Board. Um, Kate Barton has resigned. She has moved away. We have one applicant for this this position as well, which is Mike Jones. Um, there's two applicants. There's two applicants. Uh, Lisa is She's currently on P and D, uh, but she could not. She she couldn't serve on both boards. Should have to I think you know Maddie if you don't mind me no, saying fine. I think she made a mistake in putting that down because later on in her 
uh, narrative, she indicated that she was would like to continue to serve on the PMZ. PMZ. So I, I was confused about that. I think she wants to serve on both. Oh, That's really? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. she, well, says, she can't do that. She says, in addition to this, I would like to be on the library board. Mm -hmm. Well, that was my Who's mistake. I didn't catch that one. Uh, Mike Jones. Well, without talking to Lisa, knowing which one she feels more led to be a part of. Is there a, bro a well, prohibition from her serving on both? Application. Yeah. She says she, I want to. I don't think she so. can because Ricky couldn't serve oh, I'm on sorry. CETA and airport. He's on both. He's on both. I think the, the conversation was it couldn't be two decision making board. boards, so it couldn't be PNZ and BOA, but it could be an advisory board and one of the commissioners. Hmm. That was a conversation when Ricky was appointed to both. It, to be fair, those are council adopted policies. Yeah, you guys true. can yeah. decide what you want to do, whatever. Right. Dan, you know when the next library, because they meet quarterly, correct? Sorry, I couldn't hear what you said. You said Mike Jones also serves on. No, no, no. Just, oh, I'm sorry. Just Lisa. Okay. She serves on PNZ. Madam Chair, I'd make a motion to appoint Mike Jones since we have one vacancy and and verify they don't show an alternate on there, but we probably have some others that may be rotating off, and that would give us time for clarification with Lisa, and and that would put someone in that vacancy right now. But they, they just met last month, so they wouldn't meet again until two months, three months. Right. So if we table this library board until after we speak with Lisa, then we could vote on it again in August. Hmm. So, July, well, you have July committee meeting, and it would go to August council, yeah. Are you withdrawing your motion, Mr. Nash? I'll, I'll withdraw my motion if that's the pleasure of the of the committee. I mean, I think it's worth having a conversation with Lisa as well. So I would like to table the library board until our July uh, committee meeting. The, um, I'm ahead. sorry. No, I just have one more thing. Now her her term on PNZ is up in 2024. So do you think she's? I mean, we need to have a conversation. Yeah, with I mean, her, but maybe I mean, she's planning ahead for when she rolls off of coming off of PNZ. So. I, I, anyway, I, think I, I agree. Wait, table it. We'll reach out to her this coming week. Um, the Main Street Advisory Board, Phil Greer, submitted some information. Um, so we do have an open spot on the Main Street Advisory Board. We currently don't have any applicants. Mm -hmm. So if there's anybody out there who would like to serve on the Main Street Advisory Board, there's a seat open. Um, the next is planning and zoning. Uh, Mr. Nix came off of planning and zoning to serve on council. We do have an alter, alternate that we are going to move up, alternate one, which is Justin Slauson, which we would move into place two on planning and zoning. Is there any comments, questions, concerns? I don't think that takes committee action. I think but that's, it, does it? Yes, sir, you would still need. Okay, I'm, I would make the motion to move Justin to place two on PNZ then. All in favor say aye. 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 So we are going to move since council the, the movement of Justin Slauson from alternate one to place two. With that, we would move. I'd like to make a motion, or we need to make a motion to move James Stevenson from alternate two to alternate one. So I'd like to make that motion. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. So we are going to take James Q from alternate two to alternate one to council with a positive positive recommendation. With that, it leaves alternate two open for planning and zoning. We currently do not have any applicants for that, so if there's anybody out there who's interested in planning and zoning, you can find that application online as well. Um, and the last is the Stephenville Type B Economic Development Authority, which is CETA. We had um, Gerald Cook who rolled off to serve with us on council. And then we also have the resignation of Lori Beatty who has moved from the city. So we currently have two positions open on CETA. We do have two applicants. Um, 
So the first one would be Justin Haskey. So I'd make a recommendation that we move Justin Haskey to place four on the seat of board. Are these both uh, full terms or is one an unexpired? They or would both be unexpired of some mm -hmm. because Mr. Cook had a term. I don't know what his expiration was and I don't know about Miss Beatty's, but so they'd both be unexpired terms. I don't know what the links. We mm -hmm. just go to Gerald Lynn in June, I believe. Yes. It was early. So he would yes. be a 25. Do you have a recommendation? Did you say you had a recommendation? I recommend that we move Justin Haskey to place four on CETA. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 The open position in place seven, I would like to make a recommendation that we move Mark McClinton. Um, Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 So both Justin Haskey and Mark McClinton will go forward with positive recommendations of the council, and they will have to be interviewed at the July 2nd meeting as well. And then the last board that we currently have open positions for is the Western Heritage Advisory Board. We currently don't have any applicants. This is a countywide board, so anybody can, <coughs> can request to serve on that committee. With that, that is all that I have for my nomination committee. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. So, I, I, I have one question. So, for the Western Heritage mm -hmm. Board, if if I want want to move someone into the place board that Marilyn has vacated, we don't have to have an action on that. Mm -hmm. We do. Mm -hmm. You help me out with what you're saying. On the Western Heritage Board, because we have the ex officio. Yes, because ex officio is a non-voting capacity. Right. So, so if I want to move Angie Ayers into the voting capacity, what do I have to do? To make a motion. Well, then I would like to make a motion to move Angie Ayers from place one ex officio to place four in replacing Marilyn Meadow for the Western Heritage Advisory Board. I guess all in favor say aye. 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 We'll move that forward to council as well. Thank you. And there's no interview process. This is not a. But we will still have a couple ex officio, officio, whatever. Yes. Positions available if anybody is willing to serve. Can we get an update on all this? Yes. Get an update. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Mr. Nix. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Several years ago, we had some issues with some SSOs, and after conversations with the TCEQ, we began a systematic review of all of our sanitary sewer collection system within the city. We divided the city to within the city to 10 basins, and y'all have a map that shows those 10 basins. We have, through the years, gone through all of those. Some of them are large enough it's taken two. This is one of those that's taken more than one uh, time to go through. Uh, pipeline analysis has done all of those. They've done an excellent job of mapping and reporting issues and providing information to staff. What we have before us is a, a professional services agreement from pipeline analysis to do the last of these, which is uh, Basin 4 South. That will complete our survey of all of our sewer collection system and provide the information that staff needs for future repairs, et cetera. Uh, they came in under budget. The budgeted amount was 61,000 and they came in for an amount of 60,896. So they came in a little bit under it, but they did. Um, staff recommends approval of that. Does the uh, committee have any questions or comments? Well, I'm gonna commend Nick as always coming in under budget. Even if it is $109, good job. Uh, how long, uh, I'm, I'm going to miss that, but how long will this project take? To I think it takes 120, they've got a 120 day agreement. Uh, that gives them some leeway because of weather and some other things that they can't control. But there is also built into the, into the contract with them a, a performance. Uh, a lack of performance, maybe that's the way to say it, if they don't produce in the desired amount of time, they, they have the monetary incentive to do so. Perfect. I'll ask. 
I would entertain a motion for a recommendation to the council. Mr. Chair, I will make the uh, motion that we send the uh, proposal for the sanitary sewer basin, basin four south, uh, to the council with a uh, positive recommendation. Second. I've got a motion and a second. Any comments or questions from the other members of the council? <clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 That concludes our business, Mayor. It is 6.15 with no other agenda items. We'll stand adjourned.